that uh, consumption slowdown is, I think, an overarching theme, uh, not just in e-commerce, but across the FMCG space. So let's get another word in on that. Godrej consumers posted a strong Q4 update. Consumer demand for Godrej has been steady and there's also gradual recovery in the Indonesian business. So on a consolidated basis, the company is set to deliver double-digit growth led by a mid-single-digit volume growth. Samir Shah, the Chief Financial Officer at Godrej Consumers, uh, joins us now to talk about that. Uh, Samir, thanks a lot for joining in. You know, first, before I ask you about your own numbers, realization, etc., the common narrative is that the consumption piece is slowing down, whether it is across e-commerce, whether it's in spaces like autos, even in FMCG. Uh, do you think it could be hard to churn out double-digit growth in the quarters to come? Good morning, Sonia, and thanks for having me on the show. I think a couple of things. One is we are seeing a gradual rural recovery, especially in staples, and within staples, those categories which have seen uh, easing inflationary pressure. So let me give you an example. Say in our uh, play, we have so category, which had significantly high commodity inflation last year. As a result of which, the pricing went up and the consumption was lower. But since last six to eight months, the commodity price, especially palm oil, has come down. We have passed on the benefits to end consumers. And we have seen, I mean, return of growth gradually in rural. And we expect, I mean, that growth momentum to continue. So, yeah, at a overall level, I mean, the growth is still, I would say, sluggish to, you know, steady. But for staples and within staples, those categories which have seen actually price drops, we are seeing very strong uh, growth momentum. Across categories, uh, Samir, morning, what is the uh, ballpark? What kind of uh, volume growth should we expect uh, in FI24? What are you kind of discussing internally? Well, I think at this point in time, two things which are working for us, Prashant. One is, as we, I said, as I mentioned earlier, we expect, I mean, this recovery to continue uh, because of uh, easing inflationary pressures. And the second, a lot of category development initiatives in our portfolio, especially in markets like India, are reaping us now consistently rich dividends. We are seeing very strong growth momentum in categories like hair care, which is more at mass end of the market, um, as well as air fresheners, by the way, which is more at uh, premium end of the market. So my sense is in FY24, our uh, ambition would be to continue this uh, high single digit to uh, hopefully, you know, kind of low double digit volume growth momentum, especially in market like uh, India. Though there will be a little bit of pricing led decline because of, uh, you know, drop in prices, especially in soaps portfolio, which is close to a third of our overall business um, in India. All right. Hi, Samir. Uh, good morning. Uh, Samir, uh, you know, you said that some input costs have cooled off, which is uh, pretty good news. That will have a positive impact on your margins, right? Uh, could you tell us what kind of margin expansion should be we working with? Because gross margins will go up. And how much of that benefit will you put back into ad spends? Good morning, Nigel. So I think the principles which we are adopting is pass on the benefits of commodity uh, deflation to end consumers through straight pricing drops. And secondly, we'll continue to invest on marketing spends. And that's something which has worked very well now for us in the last three to four quarters. And it's also seen in the uptick in our marketing investments. So my sense is the quality of profits and the shape of it next year will be very robust. Uh, we will see expansion in gross margins. We will see increase in marketing investments driven by a lot of our simplification and digitization initiatives. We will see a drop in overall controllable cost and that should result in overall margin expansion and hopefully it becomes a good flywheel that we get growths, we get better gross margins, lower cost, scale leverage and gets reinvested back for growth and a profitable growth. So that's the uh, way we expect I mean, next year to shape up. You say margin expansion is something that could continue. Overall, are you looking to do 20 plus percent margins and for the India business particularly, I mean, it's been very good. It's been over 28 percent. Is that something that you can sustain? Yeah, I think uh, if you look at India business, the EBITDA margin over a period of time has been you know, somewhere around the early 20s to even as high as mid 20s uh, in a few years. My sense is we will see a gradual expansion in margins. It will not be a V-shaped recovery because we will use this opportunity to invest for growth. We should not you know, miss out on that growth opportunity at this point in time. And hence, I mean, we will see higher marketing investments, but that will get more than mitigated by expansion in gross margins, lower controllable cost, and net did result in uh, strong, you know, overall EBITDA uh, margin expansion, not just for one year, but hopefully for many more years to come. On the international side, uh, uh, Samir, both uh, Indonesia and uh, on the other side, Africa, 
Middle East, US, etc. Uh, what are how are things looking for F five twenty four? If you can provide us with some uh, broad guidance. Well, I think Indonesia we have had a weak year. I mean, weak actually eighteen to twenty four months. Uh, so we have actually put in a lot of building blocks uh, throughout last year or so. Whether it be distribution, whether it be uh getting some uh, category development initiatives on some of our core portfolio so we do expect a uh, gradual recovery in indonesia starting fy24 uh, we will also have low basis so optically the growth rates will be on the higher end but even on a two year tagger basis we do expect reasonably gradual recovery over there so that's indonesia africa i think the overall growth momentum has been very robust in fact over the last 10 12 quarters the growth rate has been double digits last quarter was more of a blip because of uh, elections and demon issues in nigeria which is one of our major markets but also that's honestly behind us the way the march performance has been so we do expect i mean uh, overall i mean at consolidated level which would be aggregation of india and international markets put together uh, mid to high single digits volume growth uh, and if all goes well i mean high single digits to maybe Double digit value growth because there will be some uh, pricing led growth, especially in markets like uh, Africa as well as Latin America. Samir, what about uh, market share? Have you outgrown competition? Uh, you know, have you grown better, say, than an HUL in quarter four? Yes, I think uh, we compete with different uh, uh, companies. I mean, uh, in different categories. In soaps, I mean, we have continued to gain market share. It's not just last quarter, but honestly, last you know three to four years almost. Every year we have ended up gaining 50 to 60 basis points of market share. We expect that growth momentum to continue. Air freshener, we are the market leaders now, and uh, our task is not just to gain market share, but also actually grow the category over there. And that's happening as we speak. Even in hair colors, we have gained market share in the creme part of the portfolio where we had launch of a 15 rupee creme sachet over last year or so, and that's doing again extremely well. So yeah, the overall market share, uh, you know, momentum is there. In household insecticide category, we have maintained market shares. There has been there hasn't been much of market share gains over there. Okay, all right. <clears throat> We will uh, leave it at that. Uh, thanks for joining in uh, and uh, have a great day. That's Godrej Consumers uh, with uh, you know where the where their business is headed.